that morning when I walked into the dining room, I spoke. I said, good morning. He said, good morning. I said, what are we going to have for breakfast this morning? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. And I looked at him. I said, what? He said, fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. I said, I never heard of it. The first time I went in, fixed the sandwich and put it on the tray and brought it back, that wasn't right. His father was sitting there, and he said, Mary, I'm going with you and help you, and let's see, maybe both of us can get it right. I said, okay. Then uh, he said, let's toast the bread first. So we toast the bread and then spread the peanut butter on and sliced the bananas and put on it and uh, put them into the skillet and kept turning them with the spatula and turn them till they got heated all the way through. Then I take them and cut them, put them on the platter and take them back to him. And he said, that's what I want, that's right. And then smile. The constant thing with Elvis was no change. He always stayed the same. He was this way, he stayed that way. He didn't like change. If he wanted them in the morning when he went, woke up, I would have to fix them. If he wanted them at 2 o'clock in the morning, I would have to still fix them for him. Whenever he get a taste for him, he'd call down and that's what he wanted. Well, well yeah, I imagine that hoped to make him heavy because he wanted them real rich. Because they had him on a strict diet one time. Had food coming in from uh, California. Boy, and uh, sometime he would eat it, and sometime he wouldn't. He said that's the only thing he got any enjoyment out of was eating. When he was in the hospital, he would call me to bring him in different foods. And one day he called me and told me, he says, Mary, said they have me on a diet, and I want you to slip me some hot dogs with kraut on them and slip them, wrap them up and slip them in to me and tell, tell them there was some clothes that you were bringing me up here. So I went on in with the bag in my hand and handed it to him, Mr. Ellis, and he looked at me and smiled. He said, Mary, we can get by them, can't we? I said, yeah, we sure can. And he opened that bag up and went to working on them hot dogs. And this is the house that Elvis bought for me. He bought it in 1974, and he came and picked the house out for me. And I liked it, and he liked it, so he said, well, Mary, this is your house, if you like it. I told him I loved it. It was really nice. What can we do now? He was just a sweet person. The last thing that was that cheeseburger, cheeseburgers, uh, Saturday night or Sunday night and Monday night, he didn't eat anything. I said, you're not going to eat anything for me before I go. He said, mm-mm, I ain't hungry. I just want to rest. And I said, well, okay then. Night, night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. He called me May We. He said, well, okay, May We, I'll see you tomorrow. And that's the last time I seen him alive. That was five minutes to two in the morning. Elvis Presley died here about 3.30 this afternoon. He had been found in his bathroom, unconscious, was brought to the hospital by ambulance, and Elvis was declared dead at 3.30. Then one night I was sitting there about 1 o'clock, and uh, he came down the steps and stood right there beside of me. He said, Mary, I want to stay with you. And I told him, I said, well, you're welcome to stay in my house, Mr. Elvis. You know that. And I looked up at him, and he kind of smiled a little bit. And he vanished away. And I always will. The cook 
was already there. He said, Daisy, he said, Do, would you like to have a car? She said, I sure would, Mr. Elvis. He said, well, that's your car right there. And she thanked him, and she run and picked him up off of the ground. She picked him up? She picked him up. Daisy must have been some had, heifer. And she yeah. had a wig on. <laughs> yeah. She had a wig on, and the wig fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she looked down. He said, Daisy, your wig didn't fell off. She said, well, I don't care. And she just went to jumping him up, just jumping up. And then he asked me, he said, Mary, he said, would you like to have a car? I said, I sure would. He said, well, that's your car. That white one there is yours. I said, oh, thank you. I said, that's something I never had given to me. I said, I never had anything given to me. So what happened when he was trying to diet? Because he loved food. Well, he would just stay up in his room, and he wouldn't come out. And would you stick with the diets, or did you cheat with him? You no, know, I already well, cheated. I, wasn't, I, I tried to cheat with him yeah. at one time. His doctor told him, so now we want you y'all to help us to keep him on a diet. And uh, we did. I fixed his tray that morning and carried it upstairs to him and sit it down and ran back out the door right quick. By the time I got back downstairs, he called. He said, Mary, he says, uh, come uh, up here a minute. I know what he wanted. He said, uh, who signing your checks? I said, well, you're signing them, Mr. Elvis. He said, well, I want my breakfast, like I've been getting it every morning. Were you there the day he died? No. I was working at night. The night cook was off sick. So you worked the night before he died? Yes. All right, well, let's talk about that right after we come back. All right. All right? We'll be right back at this point. We are back, and we are talking with Elvis Presley's maid and chef, Mary Jenkins. Um, where were, you were there the night before he died. Did you have any yes, clue yes, that he was so ill and so rational? Well, uh, no more than he told me that he just wanted to rest. He didn't have anything to eat that night. And, just, and he just wanted to rest. What do you think of all the things they say, like, um, Elvis is alive, right? Well, Everyone I, now says they see well, Elvis. I would like to say to everybody that is listening today that he is dead. And that is sure, for sure. Different ones call and ask me things like that, that is he dead, but he is dead. Did you go to the funeral? I heard it was such a, they ripped, the fans took everything. Yes, Wasn't it a circus? Yes, I was there. You know, they had the film at the house. They had the bodies and lie there in their state for three days. What about his temper, Mary? His, was he, his temper. I heard he had a... a, a well, a, yeah, but he was just a normal person. And he would get angry just like you or I. What about the wives? Uh, the wife, uh, Priscilla, which I think was the stablest part of his whole life. He really That's loved a, Priscilla. Yeah. And, and she loved him. And after the divorce, he then went with Linda... Thompson. Thompson. Uh-huh. Do you think... That if he had been with, because those are two tremendously nourishing women, both Priscilla that is right. and Linda. I know, both, I know Priscilla a little bit. I know Linda very well. Yeah. Um, do you think maybe he was just with the wrong people at the wrong time at the end? That if he had been with, I don't mean to lead you into saying this, but uh, do you think he'd stay with one of those two women? He'd still be alive today. Well, I believe if he had been with Priscilla, he would have been alive today. I really believe that. Now, Linda was good to him. She was a sweet person, and she was real good. And she really seen after him. What about Graceland? Were there always that many people around? You always hear stories. He had 65 people, and they were all downstairs. And Never. Well, he loved it. Uh, he just loved the crowd. And he always wanted somebody. All of the fellows that worked for him, he always wanted them to, to be there. Now, those are some pictures of time. Graceland. Obviously yes, decorated by a straight decorator. His, that, that is his dining that's room. A, yeah, that's his. Uh -huh. And that is the pool room there. Right. Uh -huh. And what else have we got? That's. Now that is the dining room. Again. Before the, uh -huh, when they had it in red. And they changed it back to the way it is today. The hallway. In black. And that is the hallway. That's the entrance hall. 
leading upstairs. Does it still look like that today? It's now a tourist attraction, isn't it? Yes, it is. And do you work there still? No, I retired 10 months ago. So you must have made some... Did you make good money? What did, what did you start with? What was your original salary? Well, when I first started off there, after everything was taken out, I brought $48. Well, at that time, so to be working in a private home, that was good money. Yeah. At that time. And what did you end up with? Well, with about two, two, about two, 265 And But he also gave you your house. My house. The house that I'm in now. He bought that house for me. What about... The drugs. There were so many drugs. Well, Are I you aware you, of it? I never seen him look like he had no kind of drugs in him. And I was there day and night, and I never seen it. But you know it was so. I mean, it was proven to be so. Well, they they said, but I never. I just can only say what I seen. But I always, the only time I would see him, he would just be resting. And just be sleepy. He'd just be laying down resting. And whenever he come home off his trips, he would always come home to rest. And that's what he would do. Do you ever sing around the house? Yeah. Did you ever listen and yes. say, ah! getting a free concert? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. We would have a time. When he'd wake up with a good spell on him, oh, we'd have a good time. He'd pick the guitar, pick us some old blues. He said, I'm going to pick y'all some B.B. King blues this morning. Muddy Water blues. And he would do that, and we would just have the best time. What about... His favorite song. Was there any one thing that he always sang? Do you remember that at all? Well, most songs that he would sing that I really would like, I liked all of them, but church songs. Now, he really precious Lord. He always would get up mostly singing that. Now, were you there when Lisa Marie was born? Yes, I was. And do you still keep up with her at all? Yes, I do. But since she had the baby, I haven't got a chance to see her other baby. But when that, I didn't even know that the baby was born and that my mother was in the hospital. They came out to the hospital and interviewed me, Channel, uh, Channel 3, about the baby. It's funny how, well, life continues and life goes yeah, on. Yes, uh huh. And how nice to have you on the show. And the book is called Elvis Memories Beyond Graceland's Gate. That's and right. I thank you very much for being with us. And That's we'll be right back. Next, baseball wide. Thank you, gentlemen. Our next guest uh, went to work at Graceland back in 1963, and for 18 years uh, she was Elvis Presley's cook. This is her collection uh, of the favorite recipes of the king. Folks, please welcome Elvis's favorite cook, Mary Jenkins. Mary? Thanks for coming. Come on down here and uh, we'll talk a little bit and then you're going to actually, uh, you're going to cook something for us, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And you worked for Elvis Presley for 18 years? Well, I've been at Graceland 25 years. Uh-huh. But I worked for him 14 before he passed. What was, what was your relationship like with him? Did you see a lot of him? Uh, was a he, was lot he, of him yeah. every day. Was he, was he friendly? Just as friendly as he could be. He treated you very well? Couldn't want it to be treated no better. Yeah, and and you had, uh, could you like joke with him? Would he joke back with you? Yes. Did he have a pretty good sense of humor? Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you, they had a cook on staff there 24 hours a day, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, and what shift did you have? The morning shift. Morning shift, and so you'd be responsible for, obviously, breakfast, right? That's right. Now, what would breakfast be there at Graceland? Well, he liked it, uh, omelet, egg omelet uh -huh. for breakfast. He liked sausage and biscuits. Right. And cream of wheat, right. fresh orange juice. Mm -hmm. Well, he just, he loves that's breakfast. A, that's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a, a, a big country southern style breakfast. That's right. Yeah, and lunch? Right. Did we have a lunch there? Well, well, we wouldn't say a lunch, because mm -hmm. whenever he w would wake up, right. that would be lunch, breakfast, what was it? dinner, <laughs> or whatever. whatever. So, just depending on the time of day, that's yeah. the meal that we'd have. Yeah. Um, if you were going to have a big party or a big family get together, what was like the uh, best uh, uh, dinner or supper or a party meal you could make? If we was going to have dinner. Yeah. What was the favorite family dinner? Dinner. Well, on his meat lines, he liked it roast beef. Mm -hmm. Hamburger steak, boneless chicken, yeah. and ham steaks. Yes, now, that was his meat. Yeah. 
So, so again, it was just a good, solid, all-American yeah. cook. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, black-eyed peas, yeah. proud of peas, string beans, cream potatoes, yeah. and mixed vegetables. Okay. Those are Let's go to work here. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna make now. <laughs> Mary, come on, come on over here. What? <laughs> oh God, they've moved. They've moved the cameras. <laughs> We want everybody. We want everybody to be able to see you while you work. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let me take some layers of fish. So you're you're just going to use what is it like a tablespoon of butter? Oh, that's a hot pickle butter. Jeez. You could paint the garage with that, Mary. Yeah, but that's the way he wanted it. Damn. <laughs> Quarter pound of butter if you're writing this down at home. <laughs> and some toast. Yeah, toast. And then you're applying uh, what appears to be uh, peanut butter. That's right. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter. <laughs> applying the peanut butter. Now, was this a recipe that you invented or Elvis no, invented? he went on a tour. Uh -huh. And when he came back, he brought this with him. <laughs> <laughs> and brought this back. Do you know the origin of this recipe? Uh, well, okay, I now bananas. Peanut butter and bananas. Oh, well, gosh, what a marvelous little tie-in with Marlon Brando's appearance. <laughs> These bananas have been and on the, the floor, Mary. And the main thing about it, I had to go back five times before I got it right. Well, well I can see that. It's quite complicated. Yes, it is. And now you're so essential. Now, please. Was he, uh, uh, did he, did he treat you well? Did you have uh, bonuses and... Oh, yes. We got a $500 bonus every Christmas. Uh -huh. Did he give you gifts? In gifts. Uh -huh. What kind of gifts would you get from Elvis? This ring, he brought it from, uh... Here, let me help you with that. You have a, you're having a, a ring there that Elvis brought you? Mm-hmm. I guess just up there like that. Like... <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And then you serve that. Take, there you go. All right. And about a dozen of those feeds one. So, uh, so let's show us. Let me see the ring, Mary. Oh, that's beautiful. Emeralds and gold. And uh, he he bought you uh, automobiles. He what what kind of cars? Well, it was Cadillacs all the time, except he bought me three, one Ford. The first one I got was uh -huh. Ford. Yeah. And then the rest. And of that time. was three months after I was there. Yeah. Did Did you enjoy your time there? Oh, did I? Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> when I first went, when I first went there, he said, "Mary, you got a job as long as you want one." Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I said, "Well, hey, but one thing about it, I want you to tell me that I got a job, and I want you to want me because I want to be here." Mm -hmm. And I stayed there until he passed. Yeah. Well, I'm and glad. And still there now. You're still working there now. Still well, that's working nice. There now. Listen, uh, I know it's a, a, a struggle to get up here from uh, Tennessee, and I appreciate the time and trouble. Good to see you, Mary. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Jenkins. Is that a true story? Yes. Yes, he, lo he loved five peanut butter natty sandwiches. That's right. He would ask for that any time of day or any time of night. And, and how did you uh, prepare those? Well, you would toast the bread first. Uh, just in a regular toaster? Yeah, yeah, I'll uh -huh. toast it in the toaster. Okay. Not real brown, just medium. Medium, okay. Uh, and then spread your peanut butter over that bread. Slice your bananas real thin. Okay. And put, a, uh, put your butter in the skillet and put it down on a low heat. Okay, what kind of butter was that? Uh, was it margarine? Well, what, what kind of butter? Butter, real butter. Real butter? Uh-huh. No particular brand, just real butter? Oh, no, no particular brand, just as long as it's butter. Okay, well, real butter. Okay, go on, what else? Yes, and then put it in there and let your butter get hot. Put it on a low heat. And pour and take with your sandwich in there and just keep pouring it. Okay. Let's flip it from side to side. I tell you what, you know what? I'm getting very, very hungry. <laughs> Yeah, that'll make you hungry, listen to that. I can almost smell it. Did, what did Elvis call you? Did he have a nickname for you? Uh, May We. May, how you say that? May We. May We. Uh-huh. All right, okay, now, let, let, let me ask you this. Did he have a set time for breakfast? What time did he usually eat breakfast? Well, just any time. Any time? Some morning, he'd wake up hungry. He'd call in the morning for his breakfast. All right, what would he call for? Well, uh, he liked uh, homemade biscuits. Uh -huh. uh, 
six gram of well done. Okay. Bread flavor, cream of wheat. Cream of wheat. That's how I was gonna I was gonna ask you what was his favorite bread. Cream of wheat? Cream of wheat. Okay. Uh, and uh, we made his uh, orange juice, fresh orange juice. Fresh squeezed orange juice. Uh huh. Okay, and uh, somebody told me he liked bacon, a lot, a lot of bacon. Uh huh, I like it fried real crisp. Real crisp or, or dark, dark, dark crisp? Yeah. Real dark? I get real dark. Real, real dark. That's Not corn, but real dark. Okay, somebody, I heard a, a, a rumor, or I read somewhere that he loved a lot of his food burnt. If it wasn't burnt, he'd send it back. Is that? Oh, no, he didn't like it. That's not true. I'm glad to hear from you. Yes, no, he didn't like it burnt, but he did like it uh, bacon, real, you know, brown and crisp. Uh, did he usually eat lunch, or was it just uh, two meals, or did he eat three meals a day? A day, unless if he would just wake up and stay woke all day, and he'd probably eat all day if he stay woke all day. Uh, that's <laughs> right, huh? <laughs> Uh, so what was his favorite meal as far as like a supper? Did he have a supper? Did he call it supper? Or did he call it dinner? Well, uh, dinner. Dinner? Yeah. Well, his meat was roast beef, hamburger, steak, boneless chicken. Boneless chicken? Boneless And how'd you prepare that chicken? Did you fry it? That, it would be, uh, the chicken would be something kind of like a uh, fillet. No bone. No bone. Uh-huh. And uh, you would just batter it and fry it just like regular chicken. Uh, that be, did he like dark meat or white meat? White. White? Okay. I like the white meat. I tell you what, I'm going to start eating all of this stuff because, you know, I really admire the king. Yes, and, he really, he really could eat. And, and I mean, he's really easy to cook for. Say that again? I said he was easy to cook for. He's okay. a picky person. Yeah, that's, that's what I heard. Hamburgers, stuff like that, cheeseburgers. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, you know, I want to I wanted hear the story about the time that uh, you were cooking something down in the kitchen and Priscilla supposedly called down and, and wanted to know what that smell was. Oh, <laughs> well, I was making spaghetti. You was making spaghetti? Uh-huh. And, and what happened? And uh, he, she called down and asked what was I cooking that smelled so good. I said, that's spaghetti I'm making. And she said, well, when it gets ready, bring me up a bowl. And when I taken hers up, it looks so good, he said, go get me a bowl of juice. He didn't care anything but spaghetti. But after that, he started eating spaghetti. That smell and that, that, that just a look, I had to, you got him. Uh, okay, one more question and we'll let you go. Uh, uh, well, also, you, did you uh, did you put a cookbook out? You, you, the cookbook? I have a new book out. Uh, what's that? The book, the name of the book is uh, Memory Beyond Graceful Gates. Oh, yeah, I bet you there's plenty, plenty memories. I have a lot of menus in that book. It's not just that call a cookbook, but I have a lot of recipes and a lot of huge menus in there. That's Memories Beyond Graceland Gates. That's right. By Miss Mary Jenkins, Elvis's personal cook right in the Graceland building. That's right. Okay, let, uh, speaking of memories, just share with us uh, that what's the, the warmest, nicest thing you ever saw Elvis, you know, do in front of you, you know, that you witnessed, the nicest thing that you can just remember him for being such a great person? Well, i tell you that, well, about the... Your, your nicest memory. Well, I was, uh, I was getting ready. I had got through with dinner. I had served him, got through everything. And I had got dressed. And I was getting ready to go to a cocktail party. And, uh, I heard somebody call me. They said, may we? And I looked around, I didn't see nobody, and they called again. And so some of the fellows that worked for him were sitting there in the kitchen. I said, somebody's calling me. They said, that's the Elvis boy. And I looked around, and it was him. He was standing in the door. We had a room there, we called the bird room. He thought he had some birds, and we used to keep the birds in there. Live birds? Uh-huh. Well, what kind of birds would they be? In, in the case, they was all, he had some little parrots. Just, just some kind of birds. Tropical birds. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, he said, Mary, to come, may we come here? And I walked over to him. I had got dressed to go and everything. And he had a, one of these uh, layers from uh, Hawaii. Uh-huh. <laughs> a lay? Yeah, a lay. Okay. And uh, he put it around my neck. He said, I want you to wear this. Oh. He said, you know, when a man puts around a lady's neck, you know what they do, what they get for that? I said, no. He said, a kiss. Oh. And he, he turned around and he kissed me on the jaw. 
Uh, that's a great story, Mary. That's a great story. Can I call you May Wee? May Wee. May Wee. Uh huh. I love it, baby. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah